Hi guys, it's Will here from 8packing.com. You can see my face in the uh, corner here. I thought it'd be a bit more interesting to listen and watch me at the same time. So 8packing.com, where we help you turbocharge your brain, strengthen your body, improve your sleep and reduce your stress. In this presentation, we're going to take a look at why indoor lights can stop you sleeping and why it might give you, don't tell anyone, but cancer. So there's a whole bunch of research papers that we're going to go through, um, through the blog and touch on in this presentation. As always, if there's anything that you want to chat to me about, just drop a comment on YouTube or if you're watching this on the apacking.com website, just drop a comment in there and I'll get back to you. So you know you need to sleep. Um, it relieves stress, reduces the risk of uh, many chronic diseases improve your memory and cognitive function. So if you're doing any rapid learning, um, taking naps is a, is a great uh, idea if you're getting involved with that kind of thing and the Tim Ferriss style doing it as well. And it might even help with weight loss. I've seen a couple of studies uh, citing that, probably just due to the hormonal changes that come along with uh, getting the right amount of sleep. It's the easiest biohack out there. I get people coming to me, they want to spend hundreds of pounds on uh tds uh, systems and neurofeedback and in reality if they just got a couple more hours sleep a night they'd be 10 times better off than what they are at the moment you've got to go with the low-hanging fruit so to speak so you need to work out how much sleep you need you can do that very easily by just adding an hour on an hour on an hour on until you wake up and you feel really good and that's about where you need to be and get that amount of sleep at all costs that means going to bed at the same time every day it means waking up at the same time every day and putting your life around your sleep as opposed to your sleep around your life. You know, you can try it for a couple of weeks, see what happens. If you don't get any massive benefits, then, you know, it's not, um, you're obviously relatively close to uh, the best point with that. Um, but in my experience, it's been the best pound for pound technique for biohacking and improving performance out there because nobody gets enough sleep. If people do get enough sleep, they're not generally sleeping well enough. And we're going to touch on that here. So just to put a bit of background around what we're going to talk about, how do you fall asleep? So in its, its very basic terms, it gets dark, you get a pigment in your eyes, which registers the, the lack of daylight. Specifically, um, the blue frequencies are um, very high up in what, it, what it's searched for and what it's trying to register. It sends a signal to your brain. Melatonin levels are raised, which is a hormone. You've probably heard of it. You can supplement with it. Um, if you're trying to reset a sleep cycle, you know, one or two days supplementing with low dose of melatonin can be good. If you're going to do more than that, there's potential issues there as like things like testosterone. If you add it into your system for a pr prolonged period of time, you'll find that your body stops secreting it, which is obviously not good. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff that happens that we don't really know about. Um, we can go into slightly more depth and I'll do another post going into the science behind this for those who are interested. But that's what you really need to know. Melatonin is what makes you start to drop off. So what's the issue with indoor lights? If you're in the presence of light and specifically blue light, which you get from these bad boys, these uh, energy saving bulbs, Put out a lot more blue lights than what the normal glass bulb um, used to and i'm finding it hard and harder for myself to actually find the normal glass bulbs so anyway melatonin isn't secreted when you're in the presence of a light so if you're going to bed at 10 11 o'clock or two o'clock in the morning it doesn't matter and you've been sat in front of your laptop or your iphone or you've been reading your kindle um not so much a kindle because i guess they're only backlit lightly but I've got a Nexus 7, so I read that. It's got a backlight on it. That is going to affect the amount of melatonin that's produced and so how easily and readily I'm going to drop off to sleep. Also, how tired I'm feeling as well. People get that. I know I had it at university of, uh, I'll just spend another hour playing this game or online or whatever. I'll, I'll play until I'm tired. It's physically stopping you getting tired. So there we go. These are some of the things that keep you awake. So the lights in your house. I put that in bold because... Most people don't sit in the dark from eight o'clock onwards, which is while how our eight bodies, you know, potentially had done in the past when there was no lights. Um, everyone checks their laptop and the phone, checks your, the last check for the emails before they go to bed, or last check on Facebook. That's going to have the same kind of effect. 
simple things like having your alarm clock if it's got a blue light display that's going to affect your sleep as well blinking blue standby lights in the room on your dvd player or on your laptop for example and then if your room isn't cut off from the outside light you can have street lights coming in as well which is going to affect it also so the biggest issue as we touched on is the lights in the house so one study and i'll just make the note now that all these studies are quoted um, and links to the actual papers in the blog post that goes alongside this so if you're reading this on 8packing.com just scroll down if you're watching this on youtube go to the comment section um, and i'll post some links to the blog post so you can check out these studies if that's of use to you so this one study showed that one hour of moderate moderately bright light was sufficient to suppress melatonin which is what we touched on but this obviously proves it and that also goes for if you've got 500 lux worth of light and you looked at it for two hours that would have the same um the same results as this study so what are the risks you might think yeah i'm getting enough sleep i'm doing okay cancer so <laughs> i was uh in doing my research for this i'd read it that that was a potential risk but i never really dove into it and it's quite interesting really um we'll touch on that again in a second um sad seasonal affective disorder you know people even you know mildly can get a bit miserable in christmas especially in the uk where we're based um, our christmases and winters can be right miserable and that one of the reasons for that is you're not getting enough sunlight and then you get the obvious consequences of a lack of sleep so the cancer i've basically put together a whole crap load of posts um to journal entries to blog posts at site journal entries so if you go on the 8packing.com website you can see a screenshot of it there you'll see all these and that goes on for another two or three pages worth so you know i'm not i've not dove into this presentation into the cancer side of things but it's something to bear in mind that that could be um why cancer rates are one of the reasons why cancer rates are rising uh, rapidly if you spend more and more time in indoor lighting situations for a longer periods of time during the day and the evening so solutions this is what we want to hear and what we want to look at the best solution is obviously going to be to avoid electronics and indoor lighting for at least an hour or two before bedtime um, and it's going to be tough <laughs> i don't know anyone i don't know any biohackers that go far enough to use candlelight um you know from eight o'clock onwards uh, you know it's winter in the uk at the moment from four or five o'clock onwards you'd have to be working from candlelight and with no laptops no computers no phones that's not really practical for most people but if you live in a hut in the middle of the woods then you've got a sus mate another solution is if you're using computers uh, so your mac windows phone um ipad that kind of thing you can install a program called flux flux pretty awesome i've used it for a while essentially you can see in that picture there it changes the color temperature of your screen depending on the time of the day so now i'm recording this during the day and my screen is nice and bright in front of me if i was recording this in the evening it go down to more of an orangey level and it essentially took the blue light out of things it makes it a bit colder and takes the blue light out of the equation which is the issue for you and your sleep and my personal favorite and i know anyone who's a fan of dave asprey will have seen these before or, or less stylish versions of these him wearing them anyway um, blue block blue light blocking sunglasses so essentially they just block the blue light coming in gives everything an orange tint when you're wearing them and you can wear them for an hour or so before bed and it makes a dramatic difference so i personally do wear these if i know i need to get a good night's sleep i don't wear them every night i certainly um, don't go uh, out clubbing in them but you know you can look like a gangster while you're having your uh, cocoa before bed and they're available for uh, purchased on upgraded uk, which is our store just dive into this a little bit further what is the evidence behind these actually working other than anecdotal evidence from myself and other people um there's a couple of studies here so they found that wearing blue light blocking sunglasses for three hours before bed improved both mood and sleep quality versus and this is important a control group wearing identical uv only blocking sunglasses so in that study, it wasn't a big study by any means. I think it's about 20 people, but it's still um, reasonable evidence f- to support this. And there's another study below that did was it essentially the same results, um, which is a bigger study and it was over four weeks. So they are the three potential solutions for 
this uh, the issue of getting blue light and essentially we're we've not evolved enough past the uh, being a, being a monkey that it doesn't affect us maybe in a hundred years we'll be sleeping in white light and it won't affect us at all but at the moment it's it certainly does affect me and it, i know it affects people and um, my clients as well so just one final slide that's me in my sunglasses looking like a badass i was last night as i was putting the slideshow together um and yeah if you enjoyed this video please click like if you want to see more of these kind of videos and more of my face in the corner, um, please click subscri subs bleh, subscribe. If there's any questions about blue light, about the cancer aspect of it, about biohacking in general, please drop us a comment either on YouTube if you're watching us there or a comment on apehacking.com. Cheers, guys.